Hello, everybody, and welcome to Life Antidotes Podcast. I am your host, Kalia, and thank you so much for joining us today on another episode of Life Antidotes Podcast. If you are new here, Life Antidotes Podcast is a place where we hope to give you wisdom and practical solutions to life's everyday problems. Here we believe there are no new problems, only new solutions. Today we have um, a conversation that we are starting about self-esteem and the antidote for self-hatred. So um, I feel like this is basic, but um, when we talk about self-esteem, it goes into everything, how we think about ourselves, um, how we think about our outward appearance, how we think about um just um, our traits in all things and when it comes to self-esteem it's something that starts to be built um, very young very uh, infant infant infinitesimal isn't the word I'm looking for but um, as an infant like what you start to believe about yourself is going to come from what people uh, say about you because you don't know anything you can't really understand um, you know spoken language at a point but Um, you're going to know like if something is bad or if something is good about you and you're going to take on those definitions and that information that you get from your mom, dad, um, people around you. So once you start to understand what they're saying, you start to associate meaning with those things and that's how you start to believe certain things about yourself, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, So when it comes to thinking about um, how do we build self-esteem and how do we have a good self-esteem it really starts about um really learning what you know about yourself um when you think about what you know about yourself some people are more self-aware than others um so it might be a journey it might be a process of identifying what do I actually know about myself and what do I believe about myself so it starts with some careful noticing um and for me particularly um when I was younger, I had a lot of uh, self-esteem issues um, concerning just my name um, and uh, feeling that my name wasn't quote unquote special um, just because like growing up in, uh, you know, uh, Latin uh, communities and uh, Latin, black and Latin communities, um, I felt everybody had like something special. They got a special letter, like starting a name with an X or an N and stuff like that. So having a name that started with a K sounded really boring to me. And um, uh, even when um, I found out that my dad wanted to name me April when I was young, I was like, that could have been interesting. That's a conversation starter. Like um, my name is Kalia, but um, if my name was April, um, and my birthday was in February. It's like, oh, that that it must be some associated meaning to that or something. You know, it just would have been something more interesting. Um, and I feel like I didn't really start to like grab hold of like being confident in my name until around like seventh and eighth grade, where two things happened, where uh, my teacher had us uh, do a project uh, about our name and what it meant. So we had to do an acrostic name and. Um, um, like finding out what the etymology slash one of the meanings of our name was. So my name meant friend. And um, that's something that I knew in passing when I was younger, but never really like grasped meaning to it. Um, but just like now, just reflecting on it, my name meaning friend, like I am very friendly slash I'm always trying to make sure that people are seen, heard and valued and be a friend even if I don't know you um, because you know you never know what people are going through in life so being kind kind to somebody um, just making sure that they know that they're important um, is part of being a friend and like trying to do that for everybody that I meet Um, especially being in like customer service and being um, in mental health it's definitely important when you want to you know validate somebody's experience their their existence their being um that's what a friend does and um one of the things that i think is definitely um important that um reflecting on my name being special and starting with a k is like starting watching keeping up the kardashians i know it seems trivial but um watching keeping up the kardashians like dang this whole family name start with k is just like in my family you know it's me kalia corinthia katavia and kevin um all named or like starting after my father's name of being kevin um so i'm like oh this like mirrors like my family we all k's too like so that's why like i started to also 
um, uh, assign some like confidence to my name. I'm like, okay, maybe K is like something special. So um, those two experiences definitely helped me to build a confidence just in my name and um, who I who I am and what my name embodies. And that's what, another reason why. Um, I'm very adamant about um, calling people by their government name Um, and uh, because like I knew I know some people like especially like when uh, growing up and going to uh, high school that had multiple different races and ethnicities meeting people from that parents literally immigrated here they didn't immigrate here for you to be called Annie when your name is Zing Lao that's that's a a, coming from a real um, example in my life but um I, I can understand you know wanting stuff to be more palatable for people but you know they don't call america the melting pot for no reason like we are all different um for a reason because there's a lot of immigration forced and otherwise that happened um in this country so that's what another reason why i'm very adamant about calling people there by their first name um that's kind of a tangent but uh yeah we're talking about self-esteem. So when thinking about self-esteem, we really want to um, just start with that noticing. Start with um, what are some of the things that you love about yourself, some of the things that, um, you know, that are different about you from even just like people in your family. And um, it's like, oh, wow, that's that's really special about me, Um, whether that's comparatively or just like, wow, I didn't know that that was something that was different about me compared to other people. Um, so I think it's just definitely very important when it comes to self-esteem that we start to monitor our thoughts because our thought lives um, really um, infiltrate what we believe. And if we continue to meditate on a specific thought, um, especially if it's already been uh, you know, ingrained in us, if you have like negative self, self-esteem, um, if, you know, when you were younger, your parents told you that you weren't going to never be nothing, you ain't going to be nothing, um, and you continue to hear that all of your life, that starts to become a thought trap in your head. You start to, you know, believe that and everything that you do becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of that thing. So when we consider our self-esteem, we really have to monitor ourself um, on our thoughts and when we have those negative thoughts, we have to stop it in its track. Like, girl, you look ugly today. Oh, no, no, I'm not. You need to have something to um, to combat that with. And um, one of the things for me especially, uh, combating that with the word of God. Like, uh, oh, you have a random thought that you you ugly today. Oh, no, I am made in the image of God. I am his worksmanship and his craftsmanship. So um, having something to combat that thought with um, would definitely – help you to you know slowly train yourself to see yourself differently um so that can be with anything so um whether that's like legit like your body and um, i know we are in an age of body positivity and um in an age where you know we are really wanting to accept ourselves as we are and what i think I don't see it a lot, so I can't say that this is a true statement, but one of the things I think that we miss in the body positivity, um, like movement, uh, and what's not talked about is this is about loving ourselves as is without change, without exception. And um, so it's like loving yourself within the process. Like if you think that you could lose some weight, yeah, that that might be something that's true for you, whether that's health reasons or otherwise, but nothing about you wanting to lose weight should negate the fact that you are just as worth it just as loved just as um you know beautiful as you are today um so it's a really it's really a a more of a fact about how do we love ourselves during the process so if you love yourself during the process that'll motivate you and push you to um then be able to lose that weight or eat healthier or whatever the case may be um so yeah uh one of the things that i like i said at the beginning of this episode is we really want to um focus on giving you practical solutions um about how do we go about these things and 
yeah, self-hatred and bad self-esteem, this it's a big concept, a big topic. But if I can give you guys three little things of what you can do um, is what I said, monitoring, to, monitoring your thought life, having um, a, 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 a thought or idea that will combat those negative thoughts when it comes to your self-esteem and how you are evaluating yourself. Um, and then uh, just noticing what are the things that um, – you like about yourself you love about yourself and um when it comes to self-esteem specifically when it comes to like how you are as a person like your character personality wise um you have to evaluate and um just think think seriously about um um how you are with other people as well as how you are with how to your how you are to yourself so those relationship skills that you play out with your friends family etc are indicative of um, and mirror back to how you treat yourself so if you are being rude and being um uh i can't think of another word but if you're being rude or being um mean to people that are around you in your circle especially if you are claiming to love these people um nine times out of ten you're actually you're also being rude to yourself um about a lot of different things could be you know how you are at work uh it could be um how you show up as a parent etc so really notice how you are in other relationships and how you treat other people to really recognize how you treat yourself and from there you can pivot and actually change because you become first aware of what the issue is um so i know we kind of talked about a lot in this uh short little episode about um self-esteem um but i hope you really got something from this and thank you for listening and hanging out with me today bye